الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعافية للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فعن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما عن النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم قال اللهم أعز الإسلام بأبي جهل ابن هشام أو بعمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه أو كما قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected elders, brothers in Islam, last Thursday we saw that a truly important and inspirational figure passed away in South Africa in the form of Nelson Mandela, a person who was important not just to Africa but to indeed for the entire human world. And we have seen that the reaction since, and we have seen that the notes of condolences and the sentiments that have poured out since truly suggest that he was a very important person. Of the 95 years that he lived on this world, 27 of them were spent behind prison for a very worthy cause, for the cause of equality, for the cause of treating people equally. That same cause that Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam championed 1,400 years ago. Since then, and this is especially something that has occupied the Muslims as well, that amidst the shock, amidst the grief and the sentiments that have poured out, Many Muslims have started questioning that what should our reaction be as Muslims? That it seems, for the most part, that it was clear that he died as a non-Muslim. But on the other hand, he seemed like a very decent person who fought for a very worthy cause. So what should the reactions of the Muslims be when a person like Nelson Mandela passes away? Can we, for example, pray for his forgiveness? Can we, like sometimes we hear the, in the Western world people say, R.I.P., rest in peace? Are we allowed to use such terms for a person who has passed away, as apparently seems, as a non-Muslim? What is the position of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah on this particular issue? So, inshallah ta'ala, from the hadith that I read to you, which can be found in Mishkat Shri, and from some verses from the Holy Quran and other references, let us explore what Islam has to say about praying, performing supplications, and doing du'as for non-Muslims. Two sections. Number one, firstly, are we allowed to pray for non-Muslims during their lifetime? And if you have a non-Muslim, if you have a kafir, can you pray for him while he's still alive? From the ahadith literature and from the majority of the opinions of the ulama -i karam you can do that. You are allowed to do that. And the example that we can give for that is the hadith that I read to you at the beginning when Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lifted his hands and prayed, Allahumma a'izil Islam bi Abi Jahl wa Umar ibn al-Khattab. That our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthened Islam by the Iman, by the Islam of either Abu Jahl or Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Both of them at that time were non-Muslims. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the guidance, for the hidayah, and for the iman of two non-Muslims. And as we all know, out of the two, it was Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu who accepted Islam. Subhanallah, you can note from this that this is the power of the dua of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam as well. Because of the two people that he prayed for their iman, Abu Jahl, and Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, although he did not mention it in this hadith sharif, clearly, personally, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam wanted Sayyidina Umar to accept Islam. <coughs> that and dua was answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, look at how quickly this was answered. The day that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam made this dua, Allahumma aiz al-Islam bi, abi, bi imani abi jahl wa Umar bin Khattab, the next day, Sayyidina Umar became a Muslim. <laughs> The very next day, the hadith of Mishkar Sharif for Asbaha Umar al Islam. In the morning, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he became a Muslim. So here you can note how quickly that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam dua is accepted. But for our purpose here, we can note that the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam did pray for the iman of non-Muslims. Number two, a second example, again from hadith literature, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he reports in his own words, that his mother was a non-Muslim and he continually prayed for her Iman and on one particular day that her mother was quite harsh towards him and so the Prophet 
So Sayyidina Abu Huraira, he reported this to the Prophet ﷺ that, Ya Rasulullah, I have tried so much for the sake of my mother's iman, she has not accepted Islam. The Prophet ﷺ too prayed for her iman. The next time that Sayyidina Abu Huraira who went home, he could hear splashes of water. He could not see anyone but could hear splashes of water. Later he realized that it was his mother performing ablution. <coughs> And as soon as his mother saw Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, she recited the Kalima Sharif, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. So again, an example where the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam performed a dua for the non Muslims. For his own uncle Abu Talib, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed for his iman until the very last moment. And it was only when a verse was revealed, which we will talk about later, that the Prophet والسلام, stopped himself from performing a dua for a non-Muslim. Even when the Prophet والسلام, himself was hurt during the battle of Uhud, that he had blood pouring from his face at one particular uh, moment as well. Even at that point, what did our Messenger وسلم, Rahmatan lil alamin, pray? He said, Allahumma fil li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamu. Our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive my people, for indeed they do not know you. He was praying for the forgiveness of his qawm, of his people. In all of these cases, the people, and the, the non-Muslims that the Prophet والسلام, was performing a dua or supplication for, were alive. So it is according to this evidence that the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah say that for people, for the hidayah, for the guidance of non-Muslims around you, you can perform a dua for them. What about when a person has died in the state of no Islam? What when you know that a person has died as a non-Muslim? Can you still do istighfar? Can you still pray for their forgiveness? According to the majority of scholars, you cannot. The door is closed now. And the reason for that is the verse from Surah Tawbah, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا كَانَ لِلنَّبِيِّ وَالَّذِينَ amalu. It is not right for the Prophet or for the believers. That they seek forgiveness for the mushrik. Even if they happen to be close relatives. Like Abu Talib, for example, in relation to our Prophet, like the uncle of Ibrahim, who was also a non Muslim. Not his father, but his uncle. After it is clearly apparent that these people are inhabitants of the hellfire. So from this verse it is clearly proven and that Muslims are not allowed to seek forgiveness for the mushriks. It is clear and it is from this as well that that means this verse also proves that you are allowed to do istighfar for the Muslims who have died in the state of Islam. And yastaghfiru lil mushrikeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you are not allowed to do istighfar for the mushriks. If we weren't allowed to do it for the Muslims as well, then perhaps Allah would have said, and yastaghfiru li ahadin minkum. That you're not allowed to do forgiveness for anyone once they have died. But specifically, Allah says for the mushriks only. So automatically it means that you are allowed to do istighfar for the mu'mins. So from this verse, and unfortunately some Muslims do not read the Quran properly, they understand that once a person passes away, you can't do any istighfar for them. Why do we read Salatul Janazah then? Salatul Janazah is nothing but his dua for the deceased. That is the whole purpose behind it. It is only called a salah because we have to perform wudu before it and we have to face the qibla. Otherwise, in reality, it is not a salah, it is a dua. What are the correct etiquettes of performing a dua? Praising Allah, sending salawat upon the Prophet, and then doing the dua. That's exactly what happens in Salatul Janazah. You first praise Allah in the form of the salah, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Then you perform salawat upon the Prophet and Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And then you perform the dua, Allahumma kulli hayyana wa mayyatana. <coughs> so this verse itself proves that, not only for our purposes, that you are not allowed to perform istighfar for the sake of non-Muslims, but it shows as well at the same time implicitly that you are allowed to do it for the Muslims. From this verse, if you are not allowed to pray for the forgiveness of the non-Muslims, what can't you do? What can we do? Can we say RIP for example? Sometimes if a, if a Muslim says it with the intention that may Allah ensure that he rests in peace, then this is haram. 
this is forbidden because that is a form of dua now for them. But if a person, for example, uses his hikmah and he's in a certain gathering where there are non-Muslims present and he needs to show his condolences and he needs to show some sentiments, his ulfat and shakkat and mahabbat for the character that has passed away, then there are nothing wrong with using the right word. When it comes to death, Muslims are allowed to show sentiments even for the sake of non-Muslims as well. Proven by the fact that our Prophet ﷺ stood for a Jewish woman's funeral when it went past. <coughs> this is the hadith of Bukhari Sharif. The companions were sitting with the Prophet ﷺ. A janazah went past. The Prophet ﷺ stood. The companions followed suit. When it passed, the Prophet ﷺ was asked by his companions, Ya Rasulullah, in Naha Janazah to Yahudi. Why did you stand, O Prophet of Allah? This was the Janazah of a Yahudi. To which our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, I know. <laughs> but when you see a janazah, whether it is a Jew, a Hindu, Christian, or Muslim, you stand for it out of respect. So to use words of sentiments, feelings, that is nothing wrong with that. And this is something which our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam certainly encouraged. We can talk about their positive contribution to humanity. Once they have died, we can talk about the good that they have brought to people. We can praise them. From the Holy Quran, it is proven that you are allowed to praise non-Muslims. In the Quran itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises certain Jewish scholars, certain Christian scholars as well, because they did not have a sense of arrogance about them and pride. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْكُمْ قِسِّيزِينَ وَرْحْبَانَ وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَقْبِرُونَ So you are allowed to praise non-Muslims. This is proven from the Holy Quran itself. But use hikmah as well, <coughs> use wisdom in each and every situation. You do not need to go to the extreme and certainly become a great analyst and say that Nelson Mandela deserves Jannah because of all of the good he did. Let Allah do his work, you do your work. This is Allah's khan. He decides who is good and who is not. He is in the best position to decide whether he will be forgiven or not. Don't decide that. Because our judgment is very poor. There was a time in this country where people thought that Jimmy Savile was good. The government thought that he was good. The Queen thought he was good. He actually, she, he actually received honors from the government. He received OBEs and all sorts because of that. There was a time when people who followed sport thought Tiger Woods was good. Thought Lance Armstrong was good. What happened to all of that now? So let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do his job. That look, this, some people, they, they go to the extreme and say that this is not fair, that such a great man, because he didn't accept Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him forever in the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَمَنْ يُرِدْ سَوَابَ الدُّنْيَا نُعْتِهِ مِنْهَا Whoever desires the sawab and the ajr of this world, certainly we will give it to him. وَمَنْ يُرِدْ سَوَابَ الْآخِرَةِ نُعْتِهِ مِنْهَا And whoever wants the sawab and the reward of the akhirat, we will give it to him. Whatever good a person does, male or female, Muslim or non-Muslim, they will see that reward. The difference, Muslims see it in the Akhirah, the Kafir see it in this world. They see their good and they see their efforts and endeavors in this world only. However, for the Muslims, if they are fortunate, they see it in this world, certainly they will see it in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ensure that we can see our ajr and reward in this world and in the hereafter. Ameen. Wa ma alayna illa al اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وسلم عليه ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما والحمد لله على كل حال وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلفه ونور عرشه محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين